Hey there, this is Dr. Pavan, your Surgery Educator on an Academy platform and today I'm here to talk to you about the weekly quiz in surgery part 3. So let us begin and let us talk about it. So the first question which we have is, there is a patient who had come to the emergency room with a stab injury to the right side of the chest at the level of the 7th intercostal space. So yes, there is a patient with a stab injury on the right side of the chest at the 7th intercostal space. Right. Now, the patient is stable okay and his vitals are also normal what is the next step which you will perform in order to rule out any underlying injury okay so whenever you have a stab injury between the nipples and the coastal cartilage always consider that maybe the patient is suffering from a diaphragmatic injury so in short this particular question is trying to ask you what will you do to rule out a diaphragmatic injury so what do you think is the answer to this particular question if you're saying the kind of the best investigation to rule out a diaphragmatic injury is the laparoscopy you are correct but what happens usually we have drilled in our mind that mri is the best investigation for the soft tissue and in our mind we feel that diaphragm is a soft tissue so let us go and mark an mri and that is a wrong answer please understand mri and the ct scan are not sensitive investigations to diagnose a diaphragmatic injury what is the best investigation to rule out a diaphragmatic injury? It is a diagnostic laparoscopy. Please understand this. Please remember this. Now, please understand, whenever there is an injury uh, between the nipples and the coastal cartilage, it is not just a diaphragm which is at the risk of injury. There is also a kind of an underlying uh, abdominal organs which are at the risk of injury. So, we can perform a VATS, that is a video-assisted thoracoscopy, or we can perform a diagnostic laparoscopy. Both we can do in order to rule out the diaphragmatic injury. What you will prefer? You will prefer to go for a diagnostic laparoscopy. Why? Because if you perform a laparoscopy, you will also get an access inside the abdomen and you can also rule out whether any other intra-abdominal injury is present or not. So I have an image for you. This is a patient who suffered from a diaphragmatic injury and as you can see, there is an underlying liver acceleration also. So if you would have done a VATS in this particular patient, maybe you would have diagnosed the diaphragmatic injury, but you would have missed this kind of a liver laceration. So that is, if at all given a choice, please go for a diagnostic laparoscopy. It is more preferred as compared to the VATS. I hope you get this. Okay, let's move on to the next question. Which of the following is true about the chronic SDH? Now here, what I'm trying to ask you, simple question. What is, which of the following statements is true as far as the chronic subdural hemorrhage is concerned? So I'll just read the options for you. Bleeding is mostly arterial in nature. Always requires a craniotomy for the treatment. Even a trivial trauma can cause this particular injury or the investigation of choice to diagnose this is a non-contrast CT scan of the brain. Now, can you please tell me what is the answer? Now, if you say that the answer is C, that is even a trivial injury can lead to this particular condition, that is in fact a true statement. So let us have a look at it. Here you have a patient uh, who has a cerebral atrophy. Now what happens as the patient, like uh, people grow old, there is a incidence of the cerebral atrophy increases. And as you can see, whenever there is a cerebral atrophy, there is a lot of room for the brain to move around in the cranial cavity. There is a lot of CSF and the brain has basically shrunken down. So even if there is a trivial trauma, there is a minute injury, still the bridging veins or the emissary veins, they can suffer from a tear and the patient can present with a uh, subdural hemorrhage and if you will see even if there is a patient who is let's say 60 years and even if the, the patient is having GCS of 15 by 15 still according to NICE guidelines we have to go for a CT scan uh, within kind of eight years okay why so because we know that in the elderly patients even the trivial trauma may lead to some or the other intracranial injury and that is why yeah, this is the reason. So in the chronic SDH, even a trivial injury can lead to the chronic SDH and especially in the elderly patients. So this is important. Now let us evaluate the other options. The first is absolutely wrong. SDH, subdural hemorrhage, it is not caused because of an arterial bleed. It is an extradural hemorrhage which is caused because of an arterial bleed. Subdural hemorrhage is always venous, bridging veins or the emissary veins, emissary veins, whatever. They will lead to the formation of a chronic SDH. Now always requires a craniotomy. That is also a wrong statement. Please understand if at all there is a chronic SDH, we can go for a burr hole. That is in fact the treatment of choice for the chronic SDH. We just need to go for a burr hole. Now what exactly is this burr hole? So as you can see in this, there is a patient who is having a burr hole which has been performed in this particular patient. So let us see how exactly this done because maybe you don't have an idea about this. So I, as you can see in this particular image, this is a drill which we use to drill inside the cranial cavity. You just make a small hole. How do you do it? So on the skin, you just put up a very, very small incision close to two centimeters. You separate whatever the skin and the underlying soft tissue is. You take up your drill, you drill, drill through the skull. 
if you want to enlarge the kind of uh, uh, space which you need you can use also a handle which is basically used in the figure number five and finally you gain access to the dura you just cut the dura you reach to the subdural page and then you can basically use the ift or whatever you want to use and you can use that and you can evacuate whatever the chronic subdural hemorrhage is there so i hope you got an idea this is how you basically perform a burr hole in a patient okay i hope you get this now the last option which we had was CT scan like the investigation of choice to diagnose a chronic SDH is a non-contrast CT scan. Now if I just ask you why is the non-contrast CT scan an investigation of choice for the head injury? The reason is because acute blood okay so if you have an acute blood this appears white on the CT scan but as the name says it is a chronic SDH so in the chronic SDH if you perform a CT scan you will get an image something like which you are getting on the kind of the right hand side of this particular you know, you know images so here you will see a heterogeneous density the shape will still be a concave or convex but you will have an heterogeneous density okay so that is why the investigation of choice to diagnose a chronic sdh is an mri that image also has been shown to you just adjust into it now i hope you are able to appreciate that one of the images is an mri one of the images is a ct scan how to distinguish i hope uh, just have a look at that uh, yellow colored pointer which i have drawn over here so just have a look at this particular point okay so this yellow color thing what the white you are seeing outside this is in fact the subcutaneous fat okay so this is a subcutaneous fat so fat appears white on the mri that is a subcutaneous fat it is not the bone it is not the bone so bone it is in fact this particular black colored stuff so this is a bone this appears black on the mri okay so this is how you can distinguish and i hope you can see that the chronic SDH is looking so nicely on the MRI and that is why MRI is the investigation of choice. On the T2-weighted MRI, you will basically diagnose this particular condition. Fair enough. Moving on to the next question, here you have a 32-year-old uh, kind of woman who was subjected to an uncomplicated appendectomy. But the pathology report basically showed that there is a 1cm carcinoid tumor at the tip of the appendix. The question is trying to ask you what is the most appropriate management. So here there is a woman who was subjected to an uncomplicated laparoscopic appendectomy and the histopathology report later on showed that there is a one centimeter size carcinoid tumor at the tip of the appendix. What do you think is the next most appropriate management in this particular patient? Is it a right hemicolectomy, right hemicolectomy with a chemotherapy, chemotherapy alone or no further treatment? So answer to this particular question is D that is no further treatment is required. Now let us have a look at how do you manage a uh, carcinoid tumor in the, of the appendix. So whenever you have a carcinoid tumor of an appendix, you can divide it into three categories, whether it is less than one centimeter in size, whether it is more than two centimeters in size, and then we have a middle range that is one to two centimeters. Let us have a look at it one by one. So if at all you have a carcinoid tumor, which is less than one centimeter size, it really doesn't matter where it is present. All you need to do is a laparoscopic appendectomy or appendectomy. That's it. That is the treatment of it. Now, if at all, the size of the carcinoid is more more than two centimeters no matter where it is you have to go in for a right hemicolectomy okay now the dilemma arises if at all the size is between one to two centimeters so if at all the size is between one to two centimeters what you have to look where it is present and the meso appendix is it involved or not so if at all the size is one to two centimeters and if it is present at the tip of the appendix and the meso appendix is not involved all you need is a appendectomy as you can see in this particular image and if at all the size of that particular carcinoid is one to two centimeters if it is present at the base of the appendix or the meso appendix is involved then you will have to perform a right hemicolectomy so just go through this particular slide you will understand how do you manage a patient of an appendiceal carcinoid okay i hope you get this particular point now this brings us to the last question of the day a patient had been detected with an incidental liver lesion on performing an mri we got this particular image what is the diagnosis of this particular patient so it is a pretty short summary which i have given you so there is an incidental liver region which you came across when you performed an mri in this particular patient so what do you think is it is it a hepatocellular carcinoma hemangioma hepatic adenoma or a focal nodular hyperplasia so well if you're thinking that the answer is hemangioma you are absolutely correct why because this particular image is showing you a characteristic light bulb appearance which you get in the hemangioma okay and in fact hemangioma is the most common liver lesion and it is usually incidentally detected okay so this is an mri of a patient of an hemangioma what you're seeing in here it is a characteristic light bulb appearance so i hope you're able to appreciate that all the soft tissues surrounding this particular lesion are appearing black and this particular lesion is lighting up like a light bulb so this is an mri in which you are getting a characteristic light bulb appearance of an hemangioma so that is the answer to this particular question so this brings us to the end of this particular uh, kind of small quiz i hope you like this i hope you gain something out of it 
thank you so much for joining with me guys and yeah so i will just request you guys to please explore our plus courses on the unacademy platform i'm sure you're going to love it we are coming up with a lot of new courses and amazing courses just have a look at it you might like it if at all you kind of want to join any of the courses please consider using my promo code it is dr.com and you will get around 10 percent off on whatever course you choose now i hope you did not miss it but yes these two are the uh, weekly surgery quiz part one and part two which i kind of published last saturday like last and last to last saturday so this is a thing which i have started i'll be publishing this weekly surgery quiz every saturday morning okay so you can just have a look at it maybe it might be helpful for you thank you so much guys it was indeed a pleasure interacting with you i hope you gained something out of it stay safe happy studying see you soon bye